Hello everyone this is part 12 of what if Naruto learned the secret of shadow clone, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Naruto sighed as he looked out over the ocean at dawn. Their vacation was only meant to be two days, but had turned into a full week of lashing about or partying. Only now, finally deciding to get up and get back to work, the group found themselves on a boat borrowed from a man in wave and navigating to where Karen and Taiyu remembered the southern sound base was located. Hanata was tagging along for Dujutsu backup, while Ino was pulling Kiyuki duty. This early in the morning however Naruto was alone at the bow while Taiyu and Karen navigated their way. On the horizon he could just make out an island with jagged rocks pointed at the sky like demonic fingers. That was most likely their target. Hanata quietly made her way next to him, staring out over the sea in silence while the sky transitioned from dark purple to a mix of orange, yellow, and blue. Have you thought up a plan question mark? Much like her, the question was quiet. Naruto nodded, Tayuya says this early in the morning no guards will be outside. So I'm going to spam clones and have them transform and infiltrate the base. Think you can scout with your eyes and give me an idea of how many enemies we have to worry about question mark. Of course. Good. Then I'll neutralize them and they will set about freeing prisoners and giving them their options. Karen says there are records here she'll want to raid, might have information on other bases or prisoner movements. Sounds like this should be quick, with any luck. Here Naruto turned to her and grinned, if it's luck, then we've got this in the bag. Watching the sea breeze tussle her hair as she smiled in return, Naruto had the urge to reach out and hold her hand. So he did. Calmly take her on of her hands into his own, his smile became softer, thank you, for being here through all of this. Blush blooming on her face, Hanata could do nothing but nod. He was holding her hand, he was touching her. If they didn't have a mission to complete she could pass out happy right now. Oh oh of course, Naruto. I meant it, I want to be by your side. That she wanted to be so much more went without saying. Her dreams lately had been much more, spicy in nature. Well you're welcome to be here, for as long as you want. Behind them in and in the wheelhouse Karen and Tayuya watched quietly. Karen with a smile while the look on Tayuya's face was something more pensive. Karen noticed this and hip-checked her friend, maybe you could just like, talk to him question mark. I don't do mushy, start with something he can help you with, like the seal. I, maybe, now's not the time, you're making excuses. Turning to walk out and join the others Karen turned red eyes towards Tayuya, he's not Orokimaru, or Kabuto. Leaving, the shorter girl jumped and latched onto Naruto's back with a laugh. Naruto and Hanata joined her, sharing a joke while their hands parted. Tayuya watched the scene in silence while she considered her own options. She hadn't considered she could have the seal removed. This lasting mark that showed Orokimaru owned her. If that could be removed then what question mark shaking her head and noticing they were within spitting distance of the shore, she cut the engine and let the boat coast its way towards beaching itself on the shoreline. Naruto turned back towards the other Uzumaki, so I'm gonna infiltrate with clones and take down whoever stands in the way. Quietly, I don't want them panicking and killing prisoners. He didn't want everyone thinking he only had explosives to use after all. Karen nodded, there's an entrance just past that outcropping ahead, and another on the other side of the island under a false rock. Hanata had her Byakugan active, eyes scanning back and forth rapidly, I see 14 guards, they don't, seem like ninja but they're all armed. I don't see any ninja at all actually. But there are a lot of prisoners, like really a lot. It didn't make much sense here, why have so many prisoners but so few guards question mark that was asking for a prison break. There were what looked like a couple thousand people below their feet. Tayuya frowned, they must have raided somewhere recently, there were no more than a couple hundred prisoners here last time I was through here. Naruto shrugged and made his seal, doesn't matter, we're freeing them. Making clones a dozen at a time to keep the chakra flares low, the clones would salute and transform into some type of insect before flying off. Karen grabbed Tayuya and hopped out of the boat to the rocky beach, we can get to the other entrance, it's closer to the warden's office where records would be stored. 
Naruto nodded and made a dozen clones to specifically aid them. Within a breath they were gone and dashing to the other side of the small island. Hanata watched quietly as the Naruto's found the entrance and made their way inside. The facility is massive Naruto, but I don't see any major traps or seals in place. Looks like the only thing protecting it was that no one knew it was here. So close to Wave it's a mashing no one figured it out. But I guess with Wave not having Ninja and Kanoa having priorities elsewhere it makes sense. Naruto made another brace of clones before instructing them not to transform, just head in. By now the previous clones will have started to take down guards. Hanata nodded, watching as several guards were either taken down silently with kunai or in one case where a guard was getting handy with a female prisoner, that particular Naruto clone brutally twisted his neck. All but one of the guards is down for good. Naruto nodded and motioned for them to go, let's get inside then, is there any large gathering space question mark? Hanata nodded, yes. Once you get towards the center the entire base opens up into a gigantic open room. We can gather people there for extraction. Naruto nodded and formed a single clone with new directions and had it dispel. The clones were to give the prisoners their options for how they wanted to leave. Keeping it vague in case people wanted to go their own way. From there he and Hanata dashed inside, Hanata directing him through torch-lit hallways and down stairwells. They passed a few sound guard corpses before they opened out into the dark and dank space that she had mentioned. So far down and deep below the water line, it probably could have fit Kanoa's Hockage Tower, but now the room was filling with people who were being directed by Naruto clones. Sighing at the ragged state of everyone he could see, their work was cut out for them it seemed. Making two clones while Hanata continued to scan for threats, he turned to them. You go to Kiyuki, let her know we hopefully have incoming refugees. Pointing at one that saluted and flashed away, then turned to the other, you head to wave, let Tsunami and Tazuna know the same. On it boss, it too flashed away. With a grimace Naruto then began to make hundreds of clones at a time, spacing them out because he had to make sure they had the extra chakra to make a Horatian jump with a passenger. Hey QB, might need a hand here. There were easily a few thousand people here, guess Hanata was right about there being a lot of prisoners. That was way more than expected and they weren't going to fit on the little fishing boat they had borrowed. Grumbling but sending out a tendril of chakra, the QB complied, I told you little monkey, for this you need not ask. It's Naruto you grump, get it right. The QB considered that. The boy had been true to his word, and was doing his best to keep his actions honorable. Perhaps. I have a name as well, Kurama. Address me as such. Naruto. Sure thing, Kurama. Not hiding his surprise at all, Naruto reminded himself that he needed to have a sit down with the Kai no, Kurama one day soon. Continuing to make clones who would pair off with a prisoner and explain their options to them, he could already see some of them flashing away. Hanata finally pointed down towards the middle of the space where a clone was holding a bleeding man on the ground. The guard was missing his legs below the knee and raging at the clone. Nodding at each other, they both jumped over the rail and descended to see what the issue was. Naruto came forward first as they hit the ground, drawing the attention of everyone in the immediate area. What's the deal? I thought I gave orders to neutralize all of them. The clone turned back with a frown on its face. This here is the warden. He's been a little extra when some of the prisoners thought you might want to give him a special send off. Clone tossing a new seal on the man's back, he groaned as his chakra was locked away and he was paralyzed. Naruto himself however got the full force of this clone's memories. And none of it was pretty. What the prisoners described about this guy made Naruto want to drag a rusty kunai through his guts. Someone, a woman who was holding torn rags around her frame stepped forward. Malnourished and thin, hair graying in some spots, Naruto gave her his attention. Is it true question mark you're giving us options to go wherever we wish question mark. Naruto shrugged while looking around at the sea of faces watching him. There were no ninja here. Just civilians that had been caught in the crossfire most likely of one conflict or another. This was the ninja world right now. More worried about themselves than the lives they trampled on. He wanted to change it, even if he could only do so this small bit at a time. He amplified his voice with a little wind chakra and made sure to make eye contact with the woman and many of the others around her, I can't take you just anywhere, but I am giving you choices. There's a place to the north, you'll be far away from wars and conflicts. 
It's quiet, most likely you'll be farming or something, but it's peaceful. Or I can take you somewhere I'm rebuilding, a chance at a new home we can build together. Something for us, the people this world tramples on. Conflict may come, but I vow to protect each and every one of you who decides to stay. The last thing I can do is drop you off somewhere in Hai no Kuni near a village or town and you can find your own way from there. But the choice is yours, I won't pressure any of you. Scanning his gaze across everyone gathered, he smiled slightly as several bowed before speaking to clones and being flashed away. Below him the man struggled to look at him, groaning in pain. He was very fat, bald and if Naruto had to guess, hadn't had to struggle for much in a long time. You think you can get away with this question mark? Naruto nodded, kinda already have buddy. Watching the space empty out quickly after making his announcement, he made a single clone and unsealed a version 2. Handing the bomb scroll over to the clone the doppelganger saluted and walked to the middle of the space to wait. Naruto sighed, remember, one hour. Got it boss, one hour. Naruto just sighed as Hanata tapped his shoulder, Karen and Tayuya are done and returning to the surface. Okay, that's our plan too. Seeing the last of the prisoners being whisked away, Naruto turned to the warden. Taking out a kunai he considered the downed man for a moment. Ha, ah, going to torture me question marks a man of justice you are. Flipping the kunai to the clone just in case, Naruto shook his head, you aren't worth the time old man. Jumping away with Hanata, they left the lone guard to his fate. As Naruto and Hanata returned to the surface to board the boat, they helped the others pushed it back off the beach and out to sea. They had another stop to make. Far away to the north Kyuki and Sandayu were watching over villages and staff helping process and aid prisoners that had been brought to them by Naruto's clones. Sandayu turned to his daimyo, seems Naruto was quick to get started on helping people. Kyuki nodded, he's made it clear that he won't compromise. Rebuilding Azushio, saving and improving people's lives, taking the fight to evil like Orokimaru. He won't stop. Sandayu sighed as he could see an interesting gleam in Kyuki's face. Whether she knew it or not Naruto was rubbing off on the woman. Sandayu hoped nothing to crazy influenced her. They both turned as Eno jogged towards them from down the hall while accompanied by a snow nin. A clipboard in her hand. Final count seems to be 732 people dropped off with us. Most are willing to work wherever we can find them work. But all of them are going to need time to recover and rebuild their strength. Kyuki nodded, okay, let's follow the plan. Start settling everyone in the aid station for now and bring food and supplies in from the nearby towns. Spread the word among the population as well. Eno, please assist where you can. We might need extra temporary shelters. Eno saluted with a grin, will do. Kyuki watched the pair turn and jog away before turning back to the window to watch the activity below. This was just the beginning, they'd learn and adapt quickly to streamline the process. She wondered idly if the letters she sent reached the destination yet. Back south and with another Naruto clone, it was talking with Tsunami while she stood before a large warehouse. Behind them through a open barn-style door they could hear the din of people milling about. Tsunami sighed as she assured the clone, again, that everything would be okay. We've been preparing since you left. We have enough food and medical supplies for everyone. The clone however still looked stressed, there's like, 1500 people we dropped off Tsunami. That's like, way too much. Tsunami again waved him off, father has been having fun ever since you've returned, he's taking all of this as a challenge. Plus all of wave is happy to give back to you and pitch in. We're your people now, use us as you need to. Also, I believe I'm supposed to receive a Horatian seal from you question mark. Ah oh, yeah. Handing a paper seal over to Tsunami who slipped it into her kimono, the clone looked uncertain, that's, a lot to think about. Tsunami just smiled and bowed to Naruto while behind her someone began closing the door, it's the mantle of a ruler. Heavy are the robes as they say. Turning away from the young man, Tsunami issued orders to several people as they closed the main doors to the warehouse. The clone was left alone to think. I don't know how boss is going to feel about that, dispelling, he was glad it wasn't his job, technically. Inside Tsunami looked over the veritable sea of people before her. More able-bodied prisoners were helping out where they could. There were several hundred families that were able to be completely reunited in all of this, but there were even more singles and orphans with nowhere to go. 
Her father had mentioned that if there were those willing and able to work that they could be sent to a zoo right away, and as she threaded through the mass of tents and blankets and supply crates, she reached the back of the space where a fake wall was situated. Another set of smaller barn doors were open, where rail cars were sitting and waiting. Someone she recognized from her father's work crew was sitting and waiting, hey a tsunami. He was waving to her. Hello, I don't think anyone will be making the trip today. They should be allowed to rest for now, regain their strength. You never know, give some of those fathers or young sons some motivation and they might just try to get straight to work. Knowing the foolishness of men, Tsunami nodded to that, be that as it may, no one should leave here today from this group. How go efforts over there question mark. Tazuna made me keep my mouth shut, it's a surprise. Tsunami sighed but turned away, fine fine. I'll keep things moving on this end, have those chakra senses acted up at all question mark, seeing him shake his head in the negative, Tsunami turned away with a smile. She had work to do. Back on their borrowed boat and steaming full speed away from the island for the last hour, Karen had everyone's attention while Tayuya piloted them along. She had been poring over the records and notes that they had pilfered from the warden's office. So apparently the old sound base in Rice has been converted into a prisoner storage location as well. Orokimaru has relocated to a different location and several other bases have seen lower security levels. Naruto grinned, must have felt the pain after the failed invasion. So does that mean Rice is next on the list? Question mark. Karen nodded, it'd be the smart bet, though we'd have to travel through hot spring country again to avoid fire country. Hanata was leaning against the wall, it would give time for spring and wave to process and move the refugees. Tayuya was grinning as they motored along, sounds like another sound base is in sight then. Naruto himself nodded slowly, certain clone memories coming to him in spurts. Wave was already working through refugees when he first arrived. Something told him Tazuna was behind that. They only told him there would be a surprise for him when they returned to Azu eventually. Well let's get going, the island is about to disappear and we don't want to get caught in the blast. Karen looked up, how big can it be question mark. Naruto's grin became feral, very, the shudder that went down everyone's spine was ominous. Back on said island, the Naruto clone had planted the scroll into the earth pointing upward while the warden had been spitting and cursing him out for almost the full hour now. The clone had gotten bored which was never a good sign. The warden however was losing his patience, not having to put up with such treatment since Orokimaru had installed him here. You're going to rot for this kid. The longer you sit here the bigger chance Orokimaru comes for your head. By now someone is on their way and you and your little whores are going to be captured, tortured, and then killed. Well, maybe. Watching the girls get turned into baby factories while you watch is an option too. Legs giving an agonishing twinge of pain, he almost missed the boy turning mismatched eyes to regard him like an insect. You know, I never understood the whole, bad guy has to monologue his plan, thing. But right now, I kinda get it. Beginning to pace around the scroll, he flipped the kunai given to him through the air before catching it again. You're exactly what's wrong with this world. The fuck do you mean question mark what do you know question mark? I know enough. You trample over those you deem lesser than you, obtain and hoard power to lord it over others. You don't care about people or their lives, only your own. If someone has something you want, you go straight to torturing or killing them to take it. You don't consider families destroyed, lives lost, people erased from history. Why should we care question mark the strong take from the weak, that's how things work. The strong should protect the weak. The strong should be helping the weak become strong. We can build bonds between each other, if we just take the time to listen for once. Listen question mark listen. What bleeding heart crap is that? Look at you. Did you talk to us before coming in here and killing us question mark of course not. You have some strength and so you came in and took what you wanted. I'm sure you've tasted all those girls as well. Screaming as the kunai lodged in his hand and locked it to the ground, the clone's eyes were glowing. Yeah, best to keep them out of your mouth tubby. Though yeah, we came in to destroy everything you've built. In fact, placing chakra into the scroll to begin its detonation, the clone walked over to kneel down and stare the man in the eyes. Before I draw my last breath, I'm going to tear down everything men like you have built and hoarded. I will slaughter you to the last, I will bathe in your blood if it means even just one more child does not have to suffer. 
that one more family can stay whole. That no more people will know what it means to lose everything because someone with a god complex decided they wanted to take whatever they could. You're mad. You'd be going against the world. An orange glow was building up behind the clone, casting shadows on his face while his blue and purple eyes shined brightly. I never once said I was fully sane. Let the world come again. They tore us down once. I'd like to see them try it a second time. I'll blow them all away in beautiful cleansing fire. There was a fraction of a second of the scroll unrolling and then there was fire and light. Far away Naruto and the girls have to close their eyes as there is an intense flash of light from the island. Then came heat and sound as the explosion rocked the ocean waters and a shock wave buffeted them even at this distance. Finally able to look back, they all stared in awe at the mushroom cloud that was climbing into the sky. Naruto himself just sighed because of course his clone decided to get melodramatic at the end. It had to be Kurama's chakra doing something. Maybe subconsciously you're a drama queen. Denied. Stage 1 is accepting the truth. Feeling the beast chuckle and fade away, Naruto turned to the others. Hanata had seen his work before so wasn't too surprised. Karen and Tayuya however were looking with something between awe and fear. That was a mashing. How the hell did you do that question mark can you make more question mark can you show me how to do that question mark, Tayuya was of course all game to blow things apart. Karen however was quiet, is that what becoming a seal master allows you to be capable of question mark no wonder the rest of the world was scared of the Uzumaki. Naruto nodded, yeah that was a bomb based on seals and heavy metals. I have a few more now that all do different things but that one does the most damage without leaving a lasting effect on the environment. I think, he still needed to do more research on that last part. Hanata turned to Naruto and places a hand on his arm, it's probably best then that we're going north now, that's a lot of attention. Oh yeah, gotta stay ahead of those fuckers. Tayuya raised an eyebrow, those fuckers question mark. Oh ah, uh, right, I forgot I never explained my, other, problem. Taking a deep breath he decided he might as well get that over with. Well, on top of my shitty village upbringing, they used me as a sacrifice to seal away one of the tailed beasts. The QB, to be specific, goes by Kurama actually. Wait wait wait, you have a demon sealed in you question mark, Tayuya's eyes were wide. Yup, been with me all my life. Karen however was curious, so, if you know its name, does that mean you talk question mark? Even when I don't want to. You need me. You're getting very chatty. You try to stay sane locked up in darkness with no one to talk to. I'm trying to make the best of a shitty deal. I guess that's a good point. Karen however was thinking about it. Well, you've shown you aren't crazy, and you don't seem like a demon. So it doesn't bug me. Though I'm curious about why you need to stay away from someone. Yeah. So there's this group calling themselves Akatsuki that want to steal the demon from my guts. Don't know why yet. Tayuya just turned back to piloting while thinking about her own issue. Well, it's an super powerful demon right question mark so it can't be anything good. He was so trusting with them. He didn't have to tell them about this. Just like she didn't have to tell him about the seal. But, right, feelings. You're super good with seals right question mark. Naruto heard the tone change in Tayuya while the others just looked at him. Yeah, pretty good. Not a master yet, but I think I'll get there. Ushering up whatever courage she had, Tayuya reached back with one hand and pulled her hair over one shoulder. Pulling down the back of her shirt slightly she exposed her curse seal. Orokimaru's work. It's called the curse seal, lets me get a power up that makes me crazy strong. Only it doesn't last super long and it's hard on the body. It also lets him subjugate and use me if he's nearby. Think you can remove it question mark. Naruto walked around the table where Karen had spread the reports and papers from the prison out and started to poke and inspect the seal. I'd have to really take a look at it, make a secondary copy so I can play around with it. But I might be able to keep the good stuff and get rid of the Orokimaru crap. I can't promise a time, but yeah, I'll add it to the list of things I'll do. It's not a rush or anything. I'd appreciate it though whiskers. Hey, sure, we'll get to work on it while we travel to rice. Hanata looked at Karen who was watching the two with a smile on her face. Her own feelings undisturbed, she wondered briefly if she should pull Karen aside later and see where she sat on the Naruto train. 
Hanata was finding she wasn't as possessive as she once believed. Her original hope of enacting the Clan Restoration Act now moot, she still knew there was a possibility of Naruto having multiple wives. She just wanted to make sure they were all able to get along together at this point. B. Far away and unaware of what was happening offshore, soon it had several visitors to her office today. Kuranai, Kakashi, Asuma and Anoiki all stood and waited on her while she unsealed a scroll addressed to her with an unknown sender. Checked and double-checked for strange seals and traps, it had eventually been deemed safe and read the letter attached to it for herself. Dumping letters out onto her desk, she handed them out to the appropriate people. Anoiki received two, Kakashi received two, while Kuranai and Asuma received one each. These are letters from our missing ninja. Naruto, Hanata, and Ino are safe, but have yet to decide when they will return. They've sent letters to you all in order to update you and hopefully assuage any fears you have. Go ahead and rear them now or later, I'll be here if you have questions. I'll answer what I can for now. Not that she herself had much information. Other than they were alive and their letters were delivered through an anonymous ninja courier service. Which usually meant a daimyo was involved. The obvious choice was spring. However the fire daimyo had also taken quick interest, which meant they could be with him. Anoiki, Asuma, and Kuranai all bowed and turned to leave, trusting that their questions will be answered in the letters provided. Kakashi however stayed behind, a troubled look on his face. Lord Hockage, do we know who tried to kill Naruto? Question mark. Sunid shook her head with a heavy sigh, unfortunately no. We still have no leads. Seeing the sensei seem even more downtrodden, she doesn't get the chance to reassure him as he turns and walks out of her office. He was taking this hard she realized. Hopefully he didn't feel like he failed another comrade, she'd have to talk with him alone soon to make sure. Outside Kakashi pulled free the letter addressed to him, pocketing the letter addressed to Sasuke and Sakura. Maybe Naruto could give him some good news. Hey sensei, I didn't get the chance to say goodbye or anything, and I'm sorry about that. But well, I'm alive, still blowing things up and taking care of Hanata and Ino. I can't tell you what I'm really planning, but it's gonna be a mashing once it's done and I hope I can show you one day. It's thanks to you after all that my life has made such a great turn around. You are an amashing sensei, the best really, even if you are kinda a pervert. But I'll make sure to check in from time to time and who knows. Maybe we'll meet again soon in the future. Oh, make sure to tease Sasuke and Sakura for me, but they can't have any little Uchiha's yet until I get back. Sasuke can't start that party without me. Do not trust Danzo or Jiraiya. I can't explain now but please. Take care of yourself. Oh. And check up on the Ichirakis for me will ya question mark let em know I'm alive and miss em. Letter ending, Kakashi read it again before lighting it on fire. He didn't know why Naruto didn't trust his godfather, but if he felt the need to warn him then he would listen. Jumping off to catch up with his students since both were most likely having dinner at said ramen stand, maybe tonight would be a good night for teasing. Heart a little lighter, the Jonan sensei of team 7 was gone in a swirl of leaves. On another road Kuranai was reading her own letter, a sad smile on her face as she read what her student had decided for herself. I'm sorry sensei for leaving without saying anything. But, you know I wasn't happy in the village anymore. If I didn't have you or Naruto there, I probably wouldn't have stayed there much longer. Or more likely, well, you'd be getting a different kind of letter by now. I'm happy out here, safe. I feel like we're doing something important, something real. I can't believe there was a time I would have complained about D-rank missions and yet now. Well now I understand. Please tell Kiba and Shino that I am okay and that I do miss them. Try to help them understand that I needed to follow my own happiness and it was nothing against them. They were like big brothers to me and I appreciated that. I needed it. I hope one day we can meet again on good terms. Though maybe Kiba can tune it down and be a little nicer to girls. I'm sure his sister is going to end up breaking a sandal on his head one day if he keeps it up. I'm going to continue towards my goal. I wanted to be by Naruto's side and I am. Now I have to work and make sure I'm strong enough to actually deserve to be here. I'll be working hard every day just like you taught me. I hope I can make you proud when we meet again. Well since Kur and I had nothing else to do she decided that maybe today would be a good day to catch up with Asuma. Or maybe Anko, her old friend had been in an odd mood lately as well. 
Anoiki himself just sighed as he finished reading the letter from his daughter, stuck between pride and sorrow. He wanted his daughter to pursue what she wanted in life, yes, but he missed his little princess. He had thought he had a few years at least before he might have to give her up forever. He could only hope things would be settled enough soon so that she could come home and visit them. Opening the door to his home and spotting his wife, he smiled sadly and handed the letter over to her. Hey dad, hey mom. I guess this is the part where I apologize for leaving her question mark. I didn't think it all the way through you know question mark but, Naruto has this crazy amashing plan to do some real good and I want to be here. Honestly I'm so far glad that I came. We're about to start something that's going to change a lot of people's lives. I wish you could be here. Naruto just puts off this aura that he can accomplish anything and everything. I just, get swept up in it. It feels good too, to know that being a ninja means I can actually help people. That I'm not just a tool. I don't know who tried to kill Naruto but they messed up badly. He's never been so motivated it seems. I'm good though I promise. And I'm going to train and get super strong and when you next see me I hope we can hug it out and I can tell you everything I've been doing. I hope it'll make you proud of me. I'm sorry I didn't say goodbye and I'm sorry if I worried you too much. But I'm in good hands. Mama I think you'd like Naruto he's really sweet. Caring. Motivated. Sorry daddy, I know you don't want to read about my feelings with boys but Naruto is different. I hope you see that. I'll write as often as I can even if we can't receive letters from you. I'm happy and I'm growing strong. I hope you're doing okay. Love you both. Hugging her husband and crying, the Yamanakas couldn't truly fault any of the kids. Anoiki had an idea of just how hard things were for Naruto and knew Ino was never going to leave him alone once she learned about his story. Comforting his wife, he considered what they would do next. There wasn't much other than to wait. And keep Ino's room clean for when, not if, she and her apparent boyfriend came to visit. B. In somewhere cold and very dark, Danzo sat behind a large desk and contemplated where everything went wrong. The fools on the council getting greedy he expected, had even planned for. But they didn't hire the assassin. Someone else had done that, but he couldn't track down who. It was vexing to him that he couldn't sniff the culprit out. He had everything planned out. He would get close to the boy. Use the listening seals on the fake book in order to learn what motivated him, what worried him. Gain information so he could get into the boy's mind and become the confidant that Hiruzen was. But someone went too far. One explosion and all his plans were moot. Years of back room deals and underhanded tactics to usurp control by gaining control of one of the largest power sources in the nation. Down the drain. He doubted Naruto would fall for Danzo trying to get on his good side now, most likely everyone with a leaf headband would be a no-go for the boy. Which meant he would need to switch to plan B. Making a hand motion, a root ninja appeared bowing before him. Yes sire question mark. Bring me that boy. At once. Like a shadow, the ninja was gone and Danzo had a moment to think. The Uzumaki was still a child, a young boy at that. He could use other options. With another motion a second root ninja fell in place before him. A teenage dark haired girl. Yes sire question mark. I have a mission for you. Seduction and compliance. Do you understand question mark. Target sire question mark. The Uzumaki. That foolish Hokage thinks he is with the fire Daimyo. I know better. You will head to spring country. Disguise yourself as an orphan while you search. Your first phase is to make contact and hand him this scroll. Reaching into the desk, Danzo retrieved a real Uzumaki scroll. Handing it to the ninja, Danzo kept his face carefully neutral, you will explain that your clan were once retainers of the Uzumaki, and you wish to continue the bond. Use everything you have, body included, towards this task. I would rather not lose this asset just yet. How shall I contact you my lord? Question mark. You will not. I will contact you through other agents, understood? Question mark. Yes my lord. Is there a time limit to this mission just in case? Question mark. Danzo shook his head, placing on hand on his desk to tap a finger idly, none. Find him quickly, bind yourself to him. Bear children for him if needed, even if we can't have him, children of an Uzumaki would be invaluable. What is my name for this mission sire? Question mark. Hmm, names always had meaning didn't they? Question mark. The boy wasn't all that bright, so he could have a little fun, 
Keohim. Understood, my lord. I Keohim will hunt down, seduce, and bend to my will the Uzumaki. Good. Go. The ninja departed without a sound and Danzo relaxed only slightly, glad that he always had some other angle to use. Looking up and hearing footsteps, he was rewarded with another dark-haired and very pale boy who bowed before him. My lord question mark. Sai, I have a mission for you. From the southern beaches of Fire Country to now the border of Hot Spring, Naruto and his current group were making good time north. They liked using Hot Spring to travel simply because the entire country was so relaxed, mostly reliant on tourism than anything else. Tonight however the group was setting up camp deep within the forest where they wouldn't be bothered. While Karen and Hanata set about putting the finishing touches on a campfire dinner, Naruto had rolled out a sleeping mat in her open space. Okay Tayuya, I need to get at your seal. Shirt off. Blushing for once as she wasn't used to him being that forward, her eyes darted to the suddenly curious Karen and Hinter. Wa question mark. Not paying attention as he was turned away and unsealing scrolls and ink he repeated himself, I need access to your back, so please, shirt off and lay down on your front. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Doing as he asked she stripped off her tunic and sports bra before laying down on the mat. Blushing and turning to watch the fire, she refused to make eye contact with either of the other girls who slowly went back to their own self-imposed tasks. Naruto however had a scroll in hand as he walked over and sat on her lower back, chakra coating his fingers as he pulled her hair aside, he began to poke and prod at her seal. Hmm, let's see, looks like I can expand it, here. Poking again, the seal bled out and expanded over her back, several spots thickening over her spine where the associated chakra gates would be. Moving down a bit to give himself more room to work, his eyes widened at the expanse of seals. Oh, this, wow, hate Orokimaru he would, but this was decent work. Taking the blank scroll he had, he drew a quick seal and placed the scroll on her back. An exact copy of her seal appeared on the scroll and he put it away for safekeeping for later. He might need it for reference just in case, so he wouldn't have to make her strip every time he needed to see or do something. Turning his full attention to her he began to trace out sections of the seal. So what's the word whiskers question mark, it was taking a lot just for her to sit still, never mind being quiet through all of this. He wasn't uncomfortable on her hips, but she was very aware that he was in fact there. Much closer than she had allowed anyone else to be to her without it being a mission. We've got a few sections here that seem to actively help you and we'll probably work to keep. But there's some I'm definitely going to have to get rid of. A paralysis section, a suicide section, and there's something else between those two. It stores something but I can't figure out what yet. Puzzling it and tracing a finger around it, a light purple miasma arced up. He took his finger away and the chakra went back into the seal. Curious and worrying. There's another section here that's meant to pull something in and convert it, probably a chakra of some sort, but I can't figure it out. Hmm, he saw something like that in a scroll before. Environmental chakra, no, it had something to do with nature. He'd have to start slow and work up to everything else. I can get rid of the paralysis and suicide sections no problem. Everything else will take some time. Getting ready with some ink and a brush he leans to the side, this part is going to sting a bit. If it gets rid of something that can be used to kill me, then I'm all for it. I can take it. Seeing the boy nod, she grit her teeth and waiting. Drawing seals around the sections around her right upper back and right lower back, ignoring the middle for now, it took him about 10 minutes of careful work before he was done. Taking the brush and ink away he inspected his work carefully. Satisfied that everything was as it should be he placed his hands on her right shoulder, gonna start the first part, be ready. Seeing the girl nod he first activated his work surrounding the suicide section of the seal. His new addition lit up with blue light, encircling the work on her back before severing it from the main seal. From there that section dissolved into nothing and soon, with a sizzle that set the girl trembling, the first section was gone. Alright, next section is coming up. Do you need a second question mark? I'm good, keep going. Okay. Activating the second seal, moving his hands to her lower back, the process was much the same. Blue light shimmered before with a light flash the seal was gone in another sizzle. All done for now. I need to research the other parts before I try to do anything with them. Pulling a healing cream from a pouch, made by Hanata herself, 
He began to work it into the older girl's back while he shrunk the seal back down to its normal size. He noted idly that one of the tomo was missing now. Karen looked over to see Naruto giving Tayuya a back rub much to what looked like the older girl's delight. Smiling and feeling like teasing, she raised her voice, Hey Naruto, how's your new seat question mark? Huh, what's that question mark? Tuning back into the world around him, having gotten into his work and associated aftercare, he was genuinely confused about what Karen meant. Tayuya gets it however, trying to will the blush away from her face as she tries to hold back a satisfied moan from his strong hands working the healing cream into her back. It felt really, really good. Seeing Hanata and Karen giggle however, she buried her face into the mat. She'd get them back later. She'd enjoy this right now. Naruto sighs and finishes up his work. So Karen wanted to tease him and Tayuya her question mark. Okay, two could play at this game. Wiping his hand on a rag and standing he walked over to stand over Karen herself. Eyes wide as he leaned down to her to where she was sitting, he leaned her up further with a hand on her chin, you know, if you wanted some attention and a back rub, all you had to do is ask. Seeing the girl try to turn herself into a tomato, she started to stutter and flared her hands about. Naruto eventually leaned away with a grin, be nice then. When I'm working I'm not focused on anything else. So no chance of me being a pervert. Turning he looked at the still hiding Tayuya, sorry if you were uncomfortable Tayuya. Tayuya however just raised a hand and gave him a thumbs up, I'm good, don't worry. She wouldn't mention that she couldn't look him in the face, but she'd get Karen back later, for sure. Happy that he didn't freak out one of his family members he set about cleaning up his supplies before opening several other scrolls, tonight he'd set about researching what he could. There was no way he was going to leave this half done. Besides this might be the last time for a while that he would have the time to do any research. Tayuya and Karen estimated that they should be in rice by tomorrow. Behind him Tayuya redressed while Hanata made sure she was in fact okay. Saying that she was okay, the older girl came over to inspect their latest dinner. A decent night's rest due to liberal use of clones as sentries, all four members of the group were up and moving through the forest again by dawn. Tayuya seemed to be in good mood and no ill effects from his work on her seal which was a plus. He would continue to monitor her for a few days though, just in case. As the forest around them begins to thin out Tayuya and Karen take the lead as they skirt the edges of now fire country while they can overlook the spanning rice paddies and fields laid out before them. Hanata was slightly awestruck, it's a beautiful place. Sound built a base here question mark. Tayuya nodded, yeah. Don't let the scenery fool you though, this play has been the site of many battles. It made it super easy for Orokimaru to come in and take control with promises of bringing power and prestige back to the diminished clans. He was good at that. It was how he convinced most of the Sound 5 to remain loyal to him. Though in her case it was stay or die. Now that he's gone the clans here will probably tear themselves back apart in no time. Naruto frowned at that, not liking the idea of war coming back to such a peaceful looking place. Maybe we could step in. It feels, I don't know, a little snake-like, but we could offer them a chance with us. As one clan trying to rebuild to another. Tayuya shrugged, I think the main clan here now is the Fuma clan. I can't remember though, that clan is about as splintered as a clan can get. Karen snorted, more than our own question mark, granted, there weren't many Uzumaki left. Most likely they were the largest group left in the nations. Tayuya led them on a winding trail, sticking to the trees and crossing over quiet roads when they had to. Thankfully this seemed to be a nation of rice fields and quiet towns so far. Soon however they were back in a tree-filled forest and Tayuya had them drop down to ground level. Why we stopping here question mark, Naruto asked as Tayuya looked around. Hanata had activated her eyes and poked Naruto, massive collection of people below us, looks like we're here. Karen nodded, my senses are picking up more guards than before, some of which are pretty powerful. Hanata's eyes were scanning as far as she could see, two sections mainly. A prison section with roughly 80 to 90 guards, and another smaller section that has less than six. Those six are easily stronger than everyone else. The group walked forward until they came upon the base entrance. Grinning Naruto made simple clones to flash away and warn Kyuki and Tazuna. Then he prepared to spam hardened clones. I need directions girls. Hanata nodded, for the prison, 
maybe 30 meters past the entrance you'll come to a tunnel that branches out towards three different directions. Take the rightmost one. That leads down to the prison. It's set up much the same as the southern base. Got it. Welling up chakra and making hardened clones from the start, he added a mix of Kurama's chakra as well. Again making hundreds at a time to try and keep the chakra flare down, the clones silently began making their way inside. At even intervals he continued to make more. Karen smiled, you could probably take over a country on your own once you get good enough. Tayuya thought about that one, let's shelve that one for later. Naruto shook his head, sounds like a headache. Though, Earth and Lightning definitely deserved a visit from him. Water too. Hanata's head darted to the side, someone's coming, not a sound ninja however. By chakra I'd say Chunin level at best. Tayuya and Karen nodded, you good Naruto question mark, they had worked out a plan for single enemies. I'm good, I'll keep up the clone spam. Feeling the three jump away and hide themselves, he took a knee and focused on his task. Being live bait could be fun. Not far away and making good time through the trees, Sasam of the Fuma clan had finally had enough and was going to bring Arashi and the others back come hell or death. Rolling up her face mask into a beanie and releasing her orange hair as she got closer and not detecting anyone, she saw the clearing where the sound base was supposed to be. Jumping down to ground level and straightening she was confused at the lone blonde sitting on the ground with his eyes closed. What was this kid doing here question mark opening her mouth to say something, she had all of a second before she was surrounded. Wa question mark. Tayuya had her by the arms, foot in her back while Hanata held a chakra covered hand to her forehead. Next to them Karen held a ram seal, earth coming up and wrapping around the girl's shins and forcing her to her knees. Identify yourself. Hanata's voice was cold and harsh. It nearly sent Sasam to wetting herself. I, 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 I'm here looking for my cousin. Arashi. I'm trying to put my clan back together and bring them back from that asshole Orokimaru. She knew she was seconds from death, but they hadn't killed her right away. Maybe that meant something question mark. Karen held her seal, we plan on rushing this place to the ground, do you have a problem with that question mark? Not at all, like I said, I'm just here for my clan, nothing more. She knew better than trying to struggle at this point, the girl in front of her could probably kill her if she so much as twitched wrong. Naruto finally looked back at the girl, taking in the green cargo shorts and grey vest. She wasn't a sound nin, no body modifications in sight. You said your Fuma clan question mark, the girl nodded very slowly, conscious of Hanata's hand at her forehead. No offense, but we're in the middle of an operation. But I'll make sure to give any one of the Fuma clan the option to leave with you instead. What's your name question mark? Sasam. Ah, you can also tell them that Hanzaki sent me. Got it. Making a clone and dispelling it with the new information, the boy turned back to making hundreds of clones at a time. One clone split off from the force, coming around and placing a paper seal on Sasam's back. She immediately lost all connection to her chakra. What is this question mark? The girls all backed away and let her go. Tayuya walked around her and grinned, just to make sure you don't try anything. If you're being honest, we'll bring out your friends and let you go soon. Hanata turned her attention back to the operation, walking to kneel by Naruto's side to give him updated prisoner numbers. Karen however focused on the girl, sorry, but while we're trying to liberate prisoners, we don't want to take a chance of being backstabbed. We really will let you go once we're finished here. Sasam watched the girls take defensive points around the man, now sure that he was the one actually in charge. Why were they liberating prisoners question mark? How do I know you won't just take me and everyone else you find to wherever you're going question mark how do I know you're better than Orokimaru question mark how could they even manage that with four people question mark. Unseen to her, Naruto just grinned, you don't, but that's what trust is about. Sending the next group in with directions to explore the other tunnels, he tried to focus on his work. However he almost immediately turned his head to focus a purple eye on the girl, think I just ran into some of your Fuma clan who question mark any of the Marashi question mark, trying to stand, she found that moving was nearly impossible. If only she could get this seal off and go inside herself. Naruto shrugs, filtering through the information being fed to him, Kotohin, Kamakiri, Kajuro, and Jigamo. You know M question mark. Yes, those are clan members of mine, please. Try to convince them to give this up. 
She didn't have to think at all about that. They needed every clan member they could get right now. No promises. I can offer them the deal, but if they choose to fight, well. Naruto himself knew he was good with words, but not everyone was willing to talk. Sasam looked down to the ground, relaxing on her knees. We all, we all in our own way just wanted to bring our clan back to glory, to have some standing on our own. But, it's been so hard, with all the wars and the skirmishes with bandits and gangs, it's tiring. I just want everyone back now. Can you, at least give them the chance to surrender question mark? Well that was a familiar story. Touched, Naruto nodded, everyone gets a chance. Making a new group of clones, they hurtled off to confront the Fuma. Karen and Tayuya came forward, Karen kneeling down to his other ear while Tayuya scanned the tree line. There shouldn't be anything valuable here, but we should check just in case, we know where the officers are here. Seeing Naruto nod and make a couple dozen clones just for them, the Uzumaki girls and the guards were offered into the entrance themselves. Hanata stayed by his side, scanning the area and also paying attention to the action below them. Looks like all the guards are down. Prisoners are being evacuated quickly at this point. You might need another hundred clones to finish the job. Seeing him nod as sweat began to bead on his forehead she considered that this was a lot he was taking on. After this maybe she could convince him to take a longer break between missions. A few minutes before and down below and on a different path, a cell of a dozen clones raced along the dim hallway. Another dozen clones were disguised as insects as was becoming their normal. Everyone in the group slowing as they came upon an open room they were greeted with a beautiful woman with long dark hair holding a koto. Strumming a few times and producing a wonderful melody, she bowed to the group. Welcome, my name is Kotohin. My duty is to, entertain, guests. This will be your stop. One of the clones takes the lead, drawing her attention while several of his bug brothers made their way around the room, what is your full name question mark we have orders to allow Fuma to surrender. Kotohin giggled at the courage of this one, that a clone would think they could defeat me. Tell you what, I am Kotohim of the Fuma clan. If you defeat me I'll happily go with you cutie. Strumming her instrument again, she readied herself for a quick battle. The lead clone grins as he notices one of his brothers has made contact with her. Feeling memories and information transfer, the clone nodded, cool, the name checks out. Bag her. Bag who know, suddenly feeling weak, she slumps forward and topples to her side. Struggling to look back, there's a clone there who finishes placing a seal on her back. All done here. The previously transformed bug clone unseals some rope and ties her up securely before picking up the woman in his arms while another clone grabs her instrument. Take her up top, we'll continue on ahead. Roger. The pair raced ahead with their mark while the rest of the group shot ahead. Bouncing along as the clone of the blonde holds her Kotohim doesn't know what to think. That she was defeated so easily and quickly. Truly seals were a frightening thing. The clone notices her watching him and grins. You know, such a pretty girl shouldn't be following after an asshole like Orokimaru. He's only using you after all, and he'll throw you away the second he no longer needs you. Blushing and looking away, the woman nodded, we know. But we were desperate and felt like we had no choice. The clan was at its wit's end and we figured we could use him as much as he used us. The clone nods, yeah I get it. I'm trying to rebuild my own clan right now and it's some majorly hard work. But I'm making real friends and allies and it's coming together slowly. Maybe we could help each other with that huh question mark, looking down and winking at the girl, besides, if all the Fuma women are beauties like you, I definitely won't mind lending you a hand. Looking away and hoping he doesn't see her blush she considers that. It depends on the will of the clan. It's not like she knew him after all, he could be lying just as Orokimaru had. As they broke out onto the surface and travel for a short distance, they came upon the blonde ninja himself. He was flanked by a short-haired girl in a blank tank top and jacket, and, Sasam question mark. Kotohim, are you okay question mark, watching as the clone sat the older girl down next to herself, she was only a little confused as the clone grinned at them both and winked, dispelling itself. The second clone put down her koto not far away. I'm fine. I didn't really have a chance to put up a fight. Looking over first from Sasam and then at Naruto and Hanata, the older girl smiled, he seems to be a man of his word. So far, we're ninja, you know what that means. 
Hanata turned back to the others, Naruto is different. He wants to change this world that views us as tools. Naruto made one last bunch of clones before standing and stretching, taking a minute to let his reserves even out, I'll unseal you all once we're done and on our way out of here. I have no problem with the Fuma after all. He also wasn't looking for a kunai in the back. Sasam watched him for a minute, considering her options. She needed to see Arashi for herself, she needed to talk to him herself. You say you can be trusted, but sealing our chakra away like this and leaving us at your mercy doesn't build that. Let me go at least. When you find Arashi I need to talk to him face to face. Naruto considered that. She wasn't, wrong about that. If he was anyone else he could do whatever he wanted to her and her friend right now. He wouldn't, but the thought was there. Making a brace of six clones, one unsealed Sasam and helped her to her feet. I'll unseal you, but not the other then. Like you said, to build trust. Seeing the girl nod gratefully he turned back to the entrance, it'll take a little bit for your chakra to stabilize, that's why I unsealed you now. But I'm asking you to be patient and wait, we'll go in when we find your Arashi. That's all I ask. Thinking about it, she bows to him, thank you. No sweat, it's what I do. Inside there was another real battle already taking place. Even though the dozen clones in here had given these new Fuma Ninja the option surrender and come back with them, they still decided to fight back. Kamakiri and Jigamo however were finding that the decision to fight most likely was the wrong one. Avoiding explosions and blasts of winds were hard enough, never mind that the clones were blashing fast, some of them appearing nearly within a blink of an eye. Seeing they were already losing and badly, Kajuro abandoned her disguise. Welling up her chakra, she was determined to make sure at least her friends would escape. She however missed the clone appearing at her side, sorry about this. No, the blast caught her full in the chest. Sending her flying to bounce off several stone pillars, Jigamo caught her and arced away from a blast of wind. A Naruto clone stood on the ceiling with its hands on its hips, we keep telling you, we don't want to fight you. That girl Sasam is trying to bring you all home. Isn't that important to you question mark you're fighting for someone who abandoned you. Watching as the trio raced away, collapsing a tunnel behind them, all of the clones groaned out. Well fuck, boss isn't going to like that. Clear the tunnel and let's go after them. Hi. They'd gotten a lot of practice clearing debris from the tunnel construction. They'd catch up in no time. Ahead of them and dodging through hallways and open rooms, the group of three finally catch up to Arashi himself. Looking at them in disgust, he watched them lower the injured Kajuro before him. Jigamo returned to his feet, these ninja are strong Arashi, heal up Kajuro and help us drive them out. We don't have time to waste. Arashi however just frowned, why should I question mark, looking down at the labored breathing Kajuro he shrugged from his seat, she failed. Failures die. What question mark you asshole? did you forget we're doing this for the clan question mark you'd let one of us die question mark for what? Question mark, muscles tensing, Jigamo couldn't believe this. Had Arashi truly changed so much question mark? I guess you all failed together didn't you? You're right, I'll have to rid myself of all of you. Arashi had been disguised as Orokimaru for so long, he was beginning to believe he was the Sanan himself. Leaping forward, the sting of betrayal in his heart, Jigamo raged and vowed to take down Arashi. He didn't make it three steps. Kamakiri was a step behind him, watching his clansmen fall in front of him, you bastard Arashi. What about the clan question mark what about us question mark, the kunai that lodged in his forehead stalled any further questions. You aren't important. Not at all. Only I have the strength to bring everything back to how it should be. Beginning his clan's secret technique, the casualty puppet, he absorbed both Jigamo and Kamakiri into himself. Cocooning them onto his back, he strode forward and knelt down to heal the heavily injured Kajuro. He watched idly as her burnt flesh smoothed and healed, most likely it wouldn't have killed her given time. Time however was not something they had. Task complete, Arashi stood as Kajuro recovered. Wah, what happened question mark. Arashi just motioned back the way the three had come, you have a second chance. Go defeat the intruders, or die. Do not return before me again a failure. Seeing just what he had done to himself and her friends, Kajuro nodded with fear and raced away. 
What have they been fighting for question mark why was all of this happening question mark did any of it matter anymore question mark coming out into a large room not even a full 100 meters away from Arashi, she was confronted with more clones. They each were in defensive positions but were giving her time. Look, we aren't going to tell you again, surrender and come with us. Sasim really wants you all back. Orokimaru has just been using you all for his own needs, he doesn't intend to help you at all. Doubt, worry, shame. Every negative emotion she could think of swirled inside of her. Her friends had died trying to save her. And now she was going to die if she didn't kill these ninja. And she already knew she couldn't. What was the harm then question mark, okay. Lowering herself to her knees, she held out her hands palm upward, I won't fight anymore. Two Naruto's came forward immediately, one slapping a seal on her back and the other catching her as she fell. Take her top side. On it. Clone picking her up and leaving, the rest considered the next move. Something with a lot of chakra is headed this way. Gotta be strong if we can sense it. Scatter. I'll stay and talk. One clone took charge while the rest transformed into what they could and hid themselves away. On the surface the group watched as a clone appeared carrying a fair-skinned green-haired girl. Gently laying her down next to Kotohim, the clone saluted and dispelled. Left alone and seeing Kotohim and Sasam waiting for her, Kajiro finally let the tears flow. He hadn't been lying. Her friends hadn't needed to die. Sasam was at her side in a moment. What happened? Question mark. Are you okay? Question mark. Shaking her head, Kajiro explained, they're dead, Arashi. Arashi's gone mad. He killed them and used one of the forbidden techniques on their bodies. It's all gone so wrong, all wrong. Sasam picked the girl up and hugged her, I'm, I'm just glad you're okay. Rest up, I'll be back in a bit. Laying the girl down while Kotohim tried to console her, Sasam turned to Naruto, I need to see for myself. Please. Nodding, Naruto turned to Hanata who came up alongside him, all right, follow us. We know the way. Turning to his clones for a moment, he pointed, take care of them properly. Watch over the pretty girls, got it boss. Seeing the original sigh and jump away, the clone looked down and smiled at the pair, we're sorry. We want to save everyone we can. Kajiro shook her head, you tried. You tried much harder than you should have been expected to. Thank you, for giving us a chance. Naruto and the two girls flanking him were inside and racing down hallways within moments, Hanata tapped him for his attention, the prison section is empty, and Karen and Taiya are headed back towards the surface. Got it, let's make this quick and get out of here. Creating one clone and unsealing a medium-sized yellow and black scroll, the clone took it and saluted, arcing down a different hallway when it had a chance. Do I want to know what that was for question mark, Sasam was curious but wouldn't push it. Ninja have their secrets after all. I won't let Orokimaru come back and take this place again. We're going to blow it apart once we're done here. Focusing and getting a report from his clones ahead, they come out into a wide open space that has already been damaged. Before them stands a grotesque monster. I guess this is a rashy question mark. Sasam stared wide eyes at the man before them. That, used to be. Yes. Walking forward, the girl raises her voice, a rashy. Are you still in there question mark come back to us, end this question mark one thought you were going to help restore the clan, to bring us to glory. How does this accomplish that question mark, tears welling up at the corner of her eyes, the girl grimaced, how does killing our clansmen make our clan great? Question mark. Arashi can't respond, instead only seeing the three ahead of him as targets to be crushed. Opening up his hands he jumped and bounced between pillars while he launched webbing at the group to trap them. Everyone dashed away, Naruto frowning and feeling out his clones. Mentally making a plan, he watched as several clones moved to follow through. Unsealing the Kubakiri Boko, he prepared to Shinshin. Hanata flipped out of the way of the strange webbing before jumping up and away towards this man Arashi. Already she could see clones moving to engage and knowing Naruto this was going to be fast. Watching the strange pods on the man's back sway and move, they spread out slightly as a new attack was being readied. Arashi was making hand seals and she jumped forward to prevent him finishing them. The amount of chakra she could see did not bode well. Sasam watches it all happen in slow motion. Two Naruto clones appear in front of the pods holding Jigamos and Kaikiri's corpses. In an explosion that rocks the room, both pods are blown away as the clones sacrifice themselves. 
Next as Arashi is rattled by the shock and loss of extra chakra, Hanata initiates some attack, poking his chest and gut in several places. The girl jumped back out of range and Naruto is there a breath later with a sword slightly longer than he is tall already in mid-swing. Please. Sasam screamed while holding out a hand trying to get close. She didn't want to watch Arashi die when he was so close. Sword halting just before the man's neck, Naruto cursed his bleeding heart. Seeing a clone behind Arashi giving him a thumbs up however, Naruto sighed and backed away, sealing away the sword. No blood for it today. Naruto and Hanata however watched as Sasam walked forward, tears streaming down her face. They turned away, giving the pair what privacy they could. Arashi dropped to his knees as he was cut off from his chakra. Realization began to set in on just what he had been doing. Sasam was shaking him, trying to talk to him, plead with him to come back. Shaking his head he knew he couldn't. I can't go back. I, we, we can fix this. You can atone. It, it'll be hard, but everyone will see you were just. No, no I wasn't. I corrupted myself. I truly saw myself as Orokimaru. The things I've done, the things I've witnessed. I can't bring that back to the clan. I can't bring the clan glory. Looking at the girl in the eyes, blood beginning to trail from his nose, he gave her a bloody smile, but you. You can do what I couldn't. I think you have the strength for it. Leave me here. Bury me with my shame and failure. Sasam shook her head slowly, not ready to give up. But Naruto put his hand on her shoulder, and she looked up to him through teary eyes, he's made up his mind. And really think about it question mark do you think the others will accept him question mark. She didn't have to think about it to know he was right. Even in her heart she knew, none of them would. Even she was having a hard time with it. She had come all this way. To only recover to few of her clan. It was. Devastating. Leaning forward she hugged him once. I'll take care of the clan in your place. I'll make them all proud. Arashi nodded. See that you do. Bring the fuma back from the brink. And keep what honor we have intact. Everyone looked up as the ground rumbled. Hanata looked at Naruto who shook his head. Not me. Arashi weakly pointed with a finger to the hall best be going. There's a fail safe that'll destroy the base if my chakra isn't felt anymore. I'm guessing these seals suppress it pretty good her huh? question mark, looking up at them all, Arashi sighed, leave me. This is what I deserve. Sasam had to be pulled away by Naruto. The group jumping away. I'll take care of the clan. I promise. I'll make you proud Arashi. They were soon gone down a dark hallway. Already have, the floor collapsed under him and darkness claimed him quickly. Making a quick exit the group meets up with a surprised Taiya and Karen. Motioning for everyone to leave, Naruto watches as his clones pick up Kajiro and Kotohim and they all put some distance between them and the base. Mentally giving his clone the signal, he knows his own bomb will go off shortly. The group gets a good distance away before the ground heaves upward and begins to collapse inward. A sickly yellow glow is issued forth from the cracks and fissures in the ground, but the explosion is minor, muted almost. When the dust settles and things stop rumbling, the ground is faced with a wide crater that's barren. Nothing alive in there, no grass, the few trees that had been caught are completely dead, but nothing else. Everyone turns to Naruto. I wanted to make sure Orokimaru couldn't come back and pick any of the corpses clean for information. That specific bomb kills anything organic within its radius. Tayuya shudders, that sounds, absolutely terrifying. Naruto nodded, it is. I only plan on ever using it against Orokimaru. He's the one who loves experimenting on people. Taking a deep breath and turning to the Fuma Ninja, Naruto reaches around and unseals Kajiro and Kotohim. Like I said, we're done here, so you're free to go. Sasam watches as Kotohim and Kajiro feel themselves out and return to their feet from the Naruto clone's arms. Kotohim a little slower than Kajiro. Just like that question mark, Sasam asks quietly. Naruto nods, just like that. I meant it. I'm trying to rebuild my clan and build something new. I want to make sure people like us have a safe place that can be free from these useless wars. Thinking it over, Naruto holds out a hand, we could always use some allies, Wanna team up? Help each other? Question mark. Sasam thinks about that. Naruto had been true to his word since he had caught her. He hadn't abused her or any of her clanmates. And the team with him seemed to respect him. 
It wouldn't hurt to have allies after all though she would have to talk to Hanzaki. Looking at Kajiro who nods slowly and then Kotohim who nods as well, the young Fuma nodded. I uh, you know I'm not the leader of my clan right question mark. Naruto shrugged, I figured, but you're pretty tough to come out here by yourself. I'll talk to Hanzaki, most likely you'll need to visit us yourself in order to finalize the deal. He won't just take our word for it. Sure sure, you operate in rice right question mark what's this country like question mark. Sasam sighed, we haven't seen our Daimyo in a long time and we're pretty sure he's dead. Bandits are a big issue here, our family is just one group. And rival gangs pop up all of the time. We're trying to bring everything back together, but they seem determined to keep the fighting going. I'm sure it would go a long way towards gaining Hanzaki's trust if you helped get rid of some of those problems. Naruto seemed tired but look at his bemused team. They already know what he's going to say. No help there. We'll think on it. We'll need to have an official sit down first. But if it's just bandits and gangs we can absolutely work on that, if that means being allies in the end. Having another nation become friendly with them could only help. Hopefully. Karen tapped Naruto on the shoulder, we should get going. We have more ground to cover. Naruto nods, got it. Turning back to the Fuma women, Naruto sends them a wave, you take care now. Kotohim sends the boy a wink, don't you worry, I'll stay nice and pretty for you till you get back. Hearing Sasam gasp and turn to her quickly while Kajiro just sighed in resignation, Naruto and the others jump away. Up in the trees and bounding in the opposite direction of the Fuma girls, Hanata finally deactivates her dojutsu. That was easily the longest she had used it and she was feeling it, why didn't you give them a Horatian tag question mark? Naruto however took one out and placed it in the upper branches of a tree. Because we aren't officially allies yet. Need a little more time than that. Just being cautious. Ah, makes sense. I think I'll send word to Kiyuki to try to contact the Rice Daimyo. Maybe we can make some progress that way as well. Or get some information. Bounding away at full speed now, the group looked for the next target. B. Sitting atop the Hokage Monument and watching over Kanoa as the sun set, Sakura and Sasuke sat together in silence. Today Sasuke had no problem letting Sakura lean into him, their shared letter from Naruto on the ground between them under their hands. At least he's okay. Sakura's voice was quiet. H.N. And it sounds like he's making progress. H.N. More silence, the sun dipped lower. Sakura however felt some heat build up in her heart. Even though his hand was on hers, they felt miles apart right now. Sasuke, don't go somewhere I can't follow. Naruto's gone, I can't lose you too. Sighing and leaning back a bit, Sasuke tentatively pulled Sakura closer to him, I'm not going anywhere. I just, somehow this feels, I don't know, like I lost another family member. With a chuckle, the girl nudged him, you two are like brothers, might as well be brothers. I'm sure, I'm sure it's eating you up that you can't help him rebuild his clan like you both had hoped. That's, Sasuke paused to think about that. It did hurt, a little. That wasn't all of it though. Some part of me, wishes we could have gone with him. Surprised that he would say it out loud the girl wrapped an arm around his waist as well, me too. They sat in a more comfortable silence after that. Watching the sun set over the village. This was their home yes, but just like Naruto they knew just how dark it could be. They however now had their own missions to attend to. Sakura sighed, I'm going to try and convince Suna to help me with my training. Naruto had suggested it. She had kind of turned herself into the team medic mom. Might as well learn from the best. Sasuke nodded, he asked me if I'd look after his important people. Konohamaru at the top of the list. Guess that'll keep me busy in between training. Till he gets back at least. Should we worry at all question mark he mentioned to be careful around the council. Around Jiraiya. Jiraiya probably knows we have a good idea of where he went. And the council is always a problem. For short, trust no one but the team. That was something Sasuke had no problem doing. This village had taken a lot from him, he and Naruto. How much more could they lose question mark? Sakura nodded. Time to train like crazy and surprise the hell out of him when he gets back. Maybe having a few little Uchiha running around would be a real surprise. Thumping her boyfriend, Sakura sighed, you both never should have become friends. 
That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.